The Baylor Bears, that little Baptist school down in Waco, top 10 in the AP preseason poll. A huge, huge distinction for Dave Aranda and company. This is Locked on Baylor. You are Locked on Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Happy Tuesday. Welcome into Locked on Baylor. We got a special guest today. You've been waiting for this crossover for the entirety of the offseason, and it happens today. That Triano kid alongside another kid talking about sports. If the show goes a full 30 minutes without the world imploding, I will be impressed. Robbie Triano joins us, a producer at Sirius XM College Big 12 Radio, thanking you for making Locked On Bail your first listen every single day. Robbie, those Baylor Bears, Dave Aranda, those guys, top 10 in the AP poll. Take it away. This is a long time coming, first of all, because I feel like I'm a resident Baylor fan just because, I mean, you guys have done so many things that make me want to talk about you guys, especially basketball and now last year in football. I feel like Waco has adopted me or maybe I've adopted Waco. I'm not necessarily sure. But having them in the AP top 25 and definitely in the top 10, I think it's deserved. You just won the big you just won the Big 12. You return a lot of great talent. You have Dave Aranda. You have Jeff Grimes, who I think is – top five best offensive coordinator in the entire country. And, oh, yeah, Blake Shapin's pretty pretty good at football, and your yeah. defense is amazing. So I, I think this is a great spot for them, but I think it could be better. Mm, I like the better spot. So, Robbie, I recently made a case that I hate Baylor being in the top ten. The reason I hate it, I don't hate it because, it, okay, it's objectively good. But at the same time, if a top ten team goes ten and two in the regular season, that's what you're supposed to do. If an off-the-radar TCU team this year comes out and goes 10-2, and two, everybody is shocked about that. So I hate to get the underdog moniker kind of goes away with your top 10 preseason ranking. Mm-hmm. I don't like that part, but I love the idea that Baylor's brand is right there. Do you feel like Dave Aranda, even through just two years as the head coach, has flipped the identity of what Baylor is, even when the casual college football fan hears the word Baylor? I think 100% too. I I think part of that was happening with Matt Rule, but obviously when Dave Aranda first took over in that COVID year, that kind of got shot down a bit. But now I think when you think of the Big 12 and what the future of the Big 12 is, like after OU and Texas leave, it's hard not to think that Baylor isn't top two, three program in the entire conference. I think now when you think of Texas football, football in Texas, I think you have your major brands, but Baylor is proving that they can be one of the premier spots in the state of Texas, which is huge. The amount of talent that is in the state is incredible. And the fact that they're a top 10 team and it's not like, oh, you know, just you, they, they belong there. Like that is a team now that you can look at their logo and be like, that's good at football. And I think now with Dave Aranda there for the next how many years, I mean, he's signed that new extension yeah. for that, for him to be there. I mean, like, obviously, like I, I'm not well versed in the history of Baylor, but it seemed like before RG three, I don't know necessarily if it no, was. They were a, bad. Yeah, yeah, they were bad. <laughs> so now the fact that they are this program and it feels like they're just going to keep on rising. And I, I, I mean, last year I think was magical. And you look at like if you're Mac Rhodes, like life is amazing. All your programs are awesome right now. Obviously, talking about three major sports: baseball and softball. That. We'll talk about that later, but it's just like those three sports to be clicking the way they are. Like yeah. It's 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 amazing what Baylor's doing. Robbie, Rob Dog, if you will, the greatest Midwestern accent in the entire Big Twelve. I'm from Michigan, I, so yeah, right. Which had, has zero Big Twelve teams, but that's neither here nor there. Wait, what? Oh yeah, you're right. Got it. Yeah, I did, you checking yourself there? Just I, I had to do the math. I had to do the math. <laughs> yeah, yeah you're right. Robbie. Uh, Nobody, you can't just be universally happy with something like this. There have to be issues somewhere. And my issue is when I look at the AP poll and move to number nine and see the Oklahoma Sooners. I, I I had this thought. I drove from Cape Cod to Texas, which by the way is not, not close. Um, And I, what I thought, Oklahoma football is not ranked in the preseason top 10 in 2022. The word Oklahoma is ranked in the preseason top 10 in 2022 because it's not what this football team is going to be. It's the brand they hold. Yeah, I mean, 100% agree. And I made a point earlier today, like, why is Oklahoma ahead of Baylor? Baylor just won the Big 12. Yes, they lose Jalen Petrie. Yes, they lose Terrell Bernard. Yes, they lose a lot of great offensive weapons. 
But did they lose more than Oklahoma? You know, the team that lost Lincoln Riley, Alex Grinch. I haven't even brought up a player yet. You lost one of the best quarterbacks in the entire country. All of your best defensive players went to the NFL. Why exactly are we giving Oklahoma the benefit of the doubt? And you were exactly right. It is a brand name. And I, I had these people in my mentions be like, well, Baylor lost some. It's like, do you yeah. understand like how important it is to have the same group of coaches? Like, And you also have a quarterback who played in two of, I'm guessing, the most important games in Baylor history in Blake Shapin. Dylan Gabriel has never thrown a single pass for Oklahoma besides a spring game. Like, you can actually look at Blake Shade and be like, he can do something because he did it for us. So the fact that they are just putting, you know what, Dylan Gabriel is good. They have good pieces. Baylor has the best offensive line in the league, possibly one of the best in the country. They have one of the best defensive lines in the league, possibly in the country. Oklahoma is good at one thing I can put right now, and I think they possibly have the best quarterback in the league. Besides that, there's nothing you can say, you know what, Oklahoma is the best at that in the country. Last year, you could say Oklahoma's defensive line was great. You could say their wide receivers were great. There's nothing you can hang your hat about that this year. So the fact that they are ahead of Baylor, it it makes me upset because I think there's a lot of other teams in the Big 12 that don't get credit because they aren't that name brand. But Baylor is a better team right now. Could they prove me wrong? Could Oklahoma prove me wrong? Sure. But I don't know how you can do that right now without a single game played. Oh, yeah, Brent Venables has never head coached a game in his life. Yeah. I love the mention of Dylan Gabriel. I mean, his ceiling is best quarterback in the Big 12. But at the same time, it's Quinn Ewers syndrome. The guy has never taken a snap at Oklahoma in an actual college football game. Is it going to be you know 2019 UCF Dylan Gabriel on the football field? Or is it going to be 2022 Oklahoma brand new, rusty, old? You, you just don't know what you're going to get. I also like that you mentioned that, that Oklahoma gets that spot over other teams without the name that could be just as good as a top 10, top 15 team. One that I've circled, it's literally like NFL U. Like you look at mock NFL drafts, it's half their teams going to the NFL next year, Kansas State. Like the guys in Manhattan look like they've got a roster that is – Granted, they may go seven and five, but half their team is going to be in the NFL next year, and no one's taking notice of that. Yeah, I, I agree with that too. And the thing that Kansas State hasn't been able to do since I've been covering this league, I've been covering this league since 2018, which is not very long, but it's been enough where I've seen all of Chris yeah. Kleiman so far. And what they haven't been able to do is get out of the middle. They are stuck in that middle so much, and they've just been poking at the ceiling, trying to get through so they can go to the top of the Big 12. And they just haven't been able to do it. But this year like, has to be the year. They have the talent. Adrian Martinez scares me but what he's done in Nebraska, but I'm all in. I'm all in with a good offensive coordinator, a competent offensive line, which is something he did not have in Nebraska, and actual pieces. I'm all in for that right now. Can I say that Oklahoma – or they're better than Oklahoma right now? No, but I think they have an excellent, excellent ceiling. And I think they should have been a top 25 team just because they have the talent. They have the most Big 12 players on the preseason list, Big 12 preseason list. So I think they deserve some credit right now. And that just shows kind of this league this year is such of a – it's it's crazy. I don't know what exactly to make of this league because I think – we always had Oklahoma here and then a huge drop off and then the next team. Now I think there's just a lot of teams that are a lot more they're very close this entire season. But I think a team that could like you can make a case be better than Oklahoma is Oklahoma State. I think they have one of the best defensive lines in the entire league. I think them and Baylor, like those are those are the best. And I think if I were to prioritize a position, I love big bodies and uh, pause, but uh, I I like Oklahoma State there. So um, yeah, can't trust, Spencer, can't trust Spencer Sanders, but I know I, I love defense. You can trust Spencer Sanders against every football team not named Baylor. It feels like because right. that's the those are the teams that he played. Did you get baseball? fun? Did you have fun watching him play in the Big Twelve Championship game? Because I had I, like because I was suddenly rooting for Baylor. I should be unbiased, but I was rooting for them. I mean, that must have been such a joy to watch him just get hustled. Was, pick, pick, pick. 
my MVP. I actually, I filled out my ballot. They set it out and I was like, no, this is like no question. The guy threw four interceptions, hats off. Somebody, somebody called him for the game and they're like, Spence, man, you got to throw it. And he was like, all right, I guess I will. And he goes out and just lays the big. It'd be hilarious like, if he was accepting the trophy. Like, how did I get this? It's like, yeah. oh, Drake, Drake did this. Yeah. yeah. Like, thanks so much. Like I just rallied the whole project. Like, Sam Khan, come on. It was John Werner yeah. just grabbing everybody. I, I yeah. got close. I was very amped that day. Uh, Robbie, I want to continue with kind of on the path of different Big 12 teams and where you see each of these squads. First, though, I got to tell the folks at home about Bet Online because Bet Online is where the game starts. If the game, it's kind of like the the universe. It had to start somewhere. Like there was like a small, and then there's something, and whatever you believe, there was a start. And if there's a place the game started, it's BetOnline.net. The reason why they've got betting lines for everything, like literally everything. Like you could bet what time I wake up tomorrow morning. I'm a college kid. I would go over 11, 11, 15, probably under on noon, but both are pretty risky. You can go to bet online and probably find that somewhere. They have podcasts, they have live scores, they have all kinds of shows and you know stuff. Just go to betonline.net. You're not a better. That is fine. I That's fine. Just go to the interface. It's fun to look at sometimes, see scores and stuff and lines for week one. I've already placed, can't say that, we're in Texas. Uh, Bet Online is a great site. BetOnline.net. Go check it out. Again, it is where the game starts at Bet Online. Robbie, Big Twelve uh, football teams. There are ten of them. Texas and Oklahoma will soon be gone. There will soon be no more Texas and Oklahoma. But right now, they are still in the league. And Texas learned today, yet yesterday, that they have two losses that are possibly detrimental to their football. Pro- like you just. You're not in a position as a university that needs to win now to start losing key players. And here they go. First scrimmage of the season, you lose two of your most important guys. Yeah. And um, it sucks. It, it, it sucks for them because it's like there's a lot of people who will just bang on Texas and be like, oh, I hate them. Oh, horns down. That sucks. Like it just like Isaiah Nair, I think, was one of the players I was looking forward to watching the most this year just because he is such a large human being. Yeah. The offensive line is not very good. Junior Aguilar was their best offensive lineman. So the fact that they lost that, um, I will say that I voted Texas number three in my preseason poll. Does it shake what I think about them? Yeah, it does a little bit. However, I do think Texas will still be the best offense in the league because you have B. John Robinson. Their offensive line kind of stinks, but they do have a lot of great wide receivers outside of Isaiah Nair. Obviously, Xavier Worthy is a beast. Um, Quinn Ewers, we will watch. I mean, there's been just so much. I can't look at his high school tape anymore. I just need to see him. I need to see him on a field playing in a Texas uniform. I can't be like, oh, he was good passing to a 17-year-old. So this is just something I need to see with Texas. But, yeah, that's a brutal blow. I thought they were going to be in the top 25. They were not. But now after this news, they. I mean, it's good on the voters for – Doing, they probably submitted their votes a week ago or so, but yeah. it's good for them. They, they had this foresight to see that this would be bad. But no, I, I this kind of makes me a little bit lower on Texas. Obviously, coming off five and seven, shouldn't have high expectations anyway, but this is really tough for them. Robbie, what do you make of our friends in Morgantown and their season upcoming? Because I I saw today, somebody picked them in the Big 12 Championship at 7-2. and two. By the way, I do think someone will go to the Big 12 Championship with two losses. There's too much parity in this league to not have one, maybe two teams, that distinction in the championship game. Could West Virginia be one of those teams, or are you not drinking that Kool-Aid? I'm not drinking that Kool-Aid at all. I do think they will be a bowl team, though. I, I'm a little bit higher in them just because the more I've looked at JT Daniels, and we've talked to Neil Brown at Big 12 Media Days, he brought up a good point. JT Daniels never lost a starting job because of ability. JT Daniels lost jobs because he couldn't stay in the field because he was hurt. And I've been watching a lot of tape on him this offseason. I mean, he has such a great arm. Yeah. Like When it comes to downfield pass, he is excellent and The thing that I'm worried about for West Virginia is, like, do they have those type of players? Yes, they have Bryce Ford Wheaton, who is, I think, one of their more return, like, their best returning wide receiver. Yeah. But besides that, it's it's a toss up, and this is definitely, I wouldn't say a big year for Neil Brown because he is secure in that buyout. I don't think West Virginia wants to do that. And honestly, like Neil Brown is just a good head coach, talking to him, being with him. He needs to win more, but he wasn't handed a very good situation at all. So that's a team I'm not exactly buying the Kool-Aid for, uh, but I could see them being – I think their their ceiling is maybe 
fifth in the conference. And that's not saying much um, just because I don't think they have the talent compared to a Baylor, Oklahoma state, Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas state. Yeah. The bottom of the league to me, and it feels objective because most of the preseason talk has had Kansas, Texas tech, and pretty, you know, you see TCU down there as well. Those three teams kind of get the brunt. You got a new head coach at TCU, Kansas is Kansas and Texas tech has new head coach as well. Of those three teams, do you see any as a dark horse contender to make a huge jump this season, or is that pretty much your bottom of this league? I think that is the bottom of the league. I do like TCU a little bit more, and can't say that. Oh, oh, not in this podcast. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's that's. But you know what? Is it a real beef between you two? I understand. Like, (sighs) I would consider it. Okay, this is a good conversation. Like after OU and Texas leave. Yeah. Obviously, there's no Bedlam. There's no uh-huh. Red River rivalry. Is Baylor TCU the best rivalry in the Big 12? Um, my girlfriend goes to TCU. So I make a lot of jokes. I tweeted today, it looks like a La Quinta, which is not really a joke if you're telling the truth. So I I would say, that here's the problem, Robbie. That none of the rivalries are good. None of them matter on like a college football scale. After Texas yeah. and OU leave, it's like, oh, Baylor TCU, ah, or the butt Farmageddon. bowl. Farmageddon. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Nobody's ever like, kids, yeah. kids, hurry, hurry. Kansas State's on. <laughs> Pack yeah. the cars. Yeah, they're playing the big <laughs> rivalry game. Uh, I think Baylor, Big Y, Baylor, Big YU, BYU could be a mm-hmm. great Baptist and, you know, LDS, I think is the politically correct term. Have those guys square off. That could be a fun mm-hmm. rivalry. But no, to answer your question, that was a fun aside. There are no good rivalries. No, I, I agree, and I think that's something this league will will find out soon. Uh, I think those will happen kind of naturally, but uh, yeah. TCU is a team I think that could rise, but a guy I have to mention who I, I think is seen well in Baylor world is Joey McGuire. After meeting him at Big 12 Media Days, my view of him just changed completely because when they fired Matt Wells, like we, we love Matt Wells on the show. He's been around. He's a very respectable guy. And they were going to a bowl game. And the fact yeah. that they fired him, it's like, I was like, who is this? And then you fire him for a guy with no college head coaching experience. It's like, what are you doing? And then as soon as I shook his hand, I was like, I'm in. He yeah. is just such an amazing human being just talking to him. And you can feel his energy. Like, I think that's what a college football coach really needs is a way for, like, players to get up and be excited to play for this person. And just like me talking to him, and he's not just like this rah-rah guy who has nothing in his head. And he's just like no brains. He is a smart guy. Mm-hmm. So the fact that like I am so high in the Texas Tech program, I don't think this year is going to be the best for them. If they can finish with a solid record, because the start of their season I think is possibly the worst in college football. They play Murray State at home to open. Okay. And then they're home, Houston – at NC State, uh, tough. Okay, home, Texas, uh, not great. At Kansas State, at Oklahoma State. Oh. If they win one other game besides their first one at Murray State, that's a credit to them because I think that is one of the most brutal stretches in all of college football. And, uh, yeah. I'm sending Joey a virtual hug. That is just – that's bad. We do love Joey, though. Joey's a great guy. Before – we jump, I, I, do, I want to get your thoughts on expansion and the fact that three expansion teams, the AP voters were like, ha, this would be funny. And they they made a funny joke. But first, Baylor in the Big 12, let's go with the Big 12. Gabe Hall, Siaki Ika, Jackson Player, defensive line. We've already talked about that. And you have you go across the way to the offensive line with Connor Galvin, and those guys are just absolutely stacked. Blake Shapin, we've seen him play at least a couple of games of college football for his respective school, more than most of the teams in the Big 12 have seen their quarterback. Where do you where do you sit with Baylor this season? I have them winning the conference. Oh. I, have Baylor, I, have, I got Baylor winning. And my biggest concern has been – with running back and wide receiver. And I think any Baylor fan can be like, yep, that's the weakest yeah. part of the team right now. But then we talked with Jeff Grimes on our show and he is like just excellent. And the reason he chose Blake Shapin is just so they can get more into the passing game. Something Gary Bohanna couldn't do, but Gary Bohanna was still like, like he could run for first downs and he like extended some plays with his legs, but they obviously need to do more throwing yeah. the football, kind of like what he did with Zach Wilson. But then at the running back position, because if I were to control a college football team, if I was was a head coach, 
I would run the damn football. I love I, I love a good running back. I loved Abram Smith last year. So when I look at this team, it's like, is Baylor can they can they do this? Because yeah. I don't know if they have a set person, but then I look at Abram Smith before last year. Twelve rushing attempts total. Yeah. Twelve. 2021, 257 rushing attempts. So the fact that I just trust what Jeff Grimes is doing. You can put anyone back there if they are smart, know how to play the position. Even, hell, like, Abram Smith played linebacker the year before that. So it's just like if they are just competent and you have the offensive line that can make things so much easier. And I've seen Squirrel Williams. I mean, he is fast. He is fa- he is very small, but he is fast. And the fact that I feel like they kind of have that trust in Ebner, Abram Smith type, type of combination with the two players that they have there. I mean, I'm high on this offense, and I think Blake Shaman is going to add another dynamic uh, to to this offense as well. And defensively, like, I just trust Dave Aranda, and they do have the players. Seeing them at media days, they were the biggest people there. Blake Sims is huge. Dil- or Ben Sims is huge. Dylan Doyle, huge. Dog. Yeah. So, that I mean, these these guys are – I'm I'm high on Baylor this year. I, th- I really do think if they don't make the, the conference championship game, something went wrong. Yeah, that is D-A-W-G, by the way, for those that are listening at home. Dog. dog. The – I, I, the idea that Baylor running back, the running back room is going to be bad is a stupid one. I also, I said something similar. Love that you bring that up about Abram Smith. Had you asked someone last season, last off season, name a Baylor running back. They'd have been like, I don't know, Tristan Ebner. Now yeah, what? Literally, he was wasn't it. even the number one running back. So, mm-hmm. and then this year, neighbor, neighbor Baylor running back. Most people, the general college football fan cannot, who cares? You couldn't name the guy last year. It's going to happen again this year. Put that in your coffee pot. The next thing, Robbie. <clears throat> Football is not complete. Neither is any show about anything Big 12 related without talking about expansion. Cincinnati's 23, Houston 24, BYU 25. How fun is that? Our cute little guys that are coming into the conference all get to be ranked and right next to each other. It's funny because we were talking about this on our show today, how like the Big 12 made a graphic. Like if these teams were in, we would have this many teams. And it's like, yeah. And it's like, should we be doing that, you know, as a conference? Yeah. Like, they aren't in yet, but you obviously need to win this PR battle to shift the narrative. Like, hey, the Big 12 is going to be better than the Pac-12, so I'm all for it. Uh, obviously, I don't know if oh, at the, if the SEC is going to be like, oh, we got number nine Oklahoma right now. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know if that's going to happen, but the fact that the Big 12, I think, had the best offseason or summer – and they didn't do anything. It's because of the work they did before. They had a terrible thing happen. You have Oklahoma and Texas leave, and then you just did the right thing of just like, you know what, all the best remaining things, you want. And now that the Pac-12 is like they lose one marquee school, the other is UCLA. Now you don't have anyone to really add to make like sense. Like if you add San Diego State, are you really making a difference? No, I don't think ESPN is going to be like, here's 10 million more dollars. Yeah. That's just not good. That's just not going to happen there. And it's weird to think that the Big 12 is in a better spot because no other conference wants us. And by no other conference, I mean the SEC or the Big 10, because yeah. it doesn't make sense for Oklahoma State to go to the Pac-12. It doesn't make Oklahoma sense for any of them to go to the American or anything else. And the ACC, I mean, what a terrible deal. They don't want to make less money. So right now, I feel like the Big 12 is in an amazing PowerPoint. I mean, not PowerPoint, but no. Place of Point power. Of, yeah, that's good. That was – it's it, my Microsoft. Brain. Yes. Hey, do you know how to use Excel? Whatever. I don't. Uh, so, yeah. I'm certified. Is, you're certified? I'm certified. Oh, can I like go to your LinkedIn and like endorse? I'm gonna, <laughs> dude. I don't even have a LinkedIn. I'm behind the. You, you are. Yeah, you're you talking me up before LinkedIn. the show. I know. I know. I float Twitter. That's my resume. Go find me on Twitter. You need a LinkedIn. Obviously, I don't think I've ever done anything with LinkedIn, but it's just like, yeah, uh, you gotta have it. Someone might look you up. Google Business you. card and then throw. It. Yeah, that's true. Where were we? Uh, yeah, the, the Big Twelve. So I just think they're in a really good spot. I think, <laughs> I think they're in. A, I think they're just like in a very good spot, and the fact that these three teams are in it. That's great. And it, it's also strange to look at, if you look at the top 25, if we include those teams in the Big 12, uh, BYU, Houston, and Cincinnati, there are no other group of five teams in that entire thing. So I, it is just amazing that, you know, the Big 12 has the credit and they, they absorb the right teams and they feel like a culture fit. And these schools are so excited to join us. I just feel like there's a lot of positive momentum for the league right now. 
Mm. Yeah, the SEC and the Big Ten, they don't want anybody else out of the out of the Big Twelve, which again, that's great. I know the you I know you want Baylor to the SEC though. I I've, I've been seeing that. Um look, SEO is a powerful, powerful thing. <laughs> and will get the best of us and just kind of just drag you down underneath. So but would I, you would you want that as a fan? Like I don't think any fan is like excited when their school gets more money. I don't think yeah. any fan is like, yeah, we make a hundred million dollars, but we're seven and five every year because we play really tough teams. Recruits are the same way. I think no recruits like, wow, your, t- your university budget went from 28 to 30 million. <laughs> huh? Right. Well, I would love to see those new Gatorade bars in the cafeteria. Like that's all it's going to amount to yeah. for a player. Oh, I got a speaker in my locker now. Cool. Whoop, whoop, like, whoop. JBL. Not even beats. Yeah. Just but JBL. I think you guys should want to say in the big 12, if you like, like yeah, you guys are going to be the, the Kings of this. And if college football playoff expansion happens like you you will just be a guarantee every year i think baylor should baylor and oklahoma state should never leave the big 12 if the playoffs expand just keep yeah, on staying in for sure yeah right it's it's the idea i don't want to make the comparison but i'm going to if if a boise state joined the sec and you're just like why did why did you do that why did you, why did you do you were doing fine everybody liked yeah. you and now you're so if baylor goes to a power like the big 10 of the sec it's going to be well no no you didn't have to do it. They've already got yeah. one Vanderbilt. Not to say Baylor would be that, but it's a lot harder to win the SEC than it like, is. I think Nebraska win. fans are probably like, yeah, I wish we stayed. Damn. Colorado fans are just like, yeah, whatever. We'll smoke we'll smoke a joint. So That's everyone fun, else yeah. is just, yeah. <laughs> so, so I think the other schools that left the, the Big 12, they're probably like, oh, okay. Besides Texas A&M. That's your man. Yeah, it worked out okay for those guys. After the, but then they had the whole thing between those coaches that got mad at each other, and then everybody yeah. got upset, and then all kinds of stuff. So uh, who knows in the end? Uh, Robbie, speaking of the end, we've come there. It is, oh. it is, it is, it is time. I want to thank you so much for coming on Locked On Baylor. Please plug all of the things that you've ever done. Before I plug that, I just want to thank you. I want to thank to the Locked On people because I think you guys just do an exceptional job, and it's a grind creating content every day. So for the stuff that you do. I mean, you, you're one of the best at doing it, so I appreciate that. So after you're done listening to this, after you're listening to Lockdown Big 12 from my friend Josh Neighbors, come over to SiriusXM Big 12 Radio. I do Big 12 today from 3 to 5 Central. There's Big 12 this morning with uh, Ari Temkin and Dave Archer from 7 to 10. I work with Gay Biker and a bunch of Sooner people, Dusty Dvorak, some of the best voices at ESPN and in college sports. So come on, come on over. Go steal your mom's credit card and get a subscription. I will probably steal my mom's credit card because I still do that to this day. I've got to log to my computer and use it. You're in college, I man. You're fine. Why not? Just take the lumps. Forgiveness, not permission. There, there you go. Write that down. Put that on one of the funny graphics. Put that on the graphic for today's show. Forgiveness, yes. not permission. I'm Drake Toll. That's Robert Triano. Go follow him on Twitter at the Triano Kid. And tomorrow's show, I haven't planned it, so no, don't know what's going to happen. But we're going to be talking about sports, namely Baylor sports, mostly football, all of that and more. Please come back to Locked On. Baylor.